on this, the 20th anniversary of that tragic occasion, we have returned to Bennett College. And in a strange way, the spirits of Bill Sampson, Cecil Corsay, Jim Waller, Michael Nathan, Sandy Smith have convened us. And I want to say to those five spirits tonight, wherever you are, a luto continua, the struggle continues. Let me just say to all of my friends on the West Coast that I regret very much that I'm not able to be with you. Um, I'm recovering from surgery, uh, but I want to send my warmest regards and the warmest regards of the people of Greensboro and really of North Carolina. We've just completed uh, a marvelous period of celebration, uh, of remembrance, um, of recommitment. Um, it was concentrated uh, in a week, but really it's been going on here for more than a month. Um, I think for the first time uh, since the tragic event occurred, there has been uh, a level of discussion and a quality of discussion in this area, which has some promise of breaking through the enormous set of cover stories and getting at the truth. Within 24 hours after that massacre, the powers that be in North Carolina had put forth their line that this was a shootout between two equally reprehensible groups. And so part of the challenge for those of us who want to understand the lessons of Greensboro and understand the lessons of zero-sum power in this country is number one, to identify and keep in front of our minds at all times those three phases of power. It is not enough to understand the contest. It is always critical to understand who set the agenda. As Martin Luther King Jr. once observed, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. It only bends toward justice if we make it so. We are living the lessons of Greensboro. We can bend the moral arc of the universe toward justice, but only through our commitment, only through our faith, only through our struggle, and without struggle, the lesson we learned from Greensboro, without struggle, there can be no progress. Thank you. One of the great um, uh, strengths of this uh, celebration was a wonderful play, uh, Greensboro, a requiem, that uh, the local university here, the University of North Carolina in Greensboro, got into so fully. Um, and uh, the whole university, the students, uh, the faculty, uh, and dedicated in some sense uh, a whole year uh, to exploring the human dynamics of racism with November 3rd being kind of an anchoring point. Now come on, I want you to see it and feel it. A reality where everybody is somebody. A reality where, 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 where there is no need for racism because we're all somebody equal to each other. Amen. A reality where there are no Nazis, there are no Klan, there is no shooting because somebody suffered for righteousness sake.
I think that the play, uh, I, I, it's hard to measure the importance. It was uh, of enormous importance in making people human, uh, in allowing people to tell their story, uh, in allowing people to express their anguish, uh, their hurt and their pain, their mistakes, uh, our mistakes, uh, but at last to express uh, the deep purpose and meaning uh, that uh, was um, a part of uh, our lives. The label communist was used to dehumanize us and to make us less than people. We tried to tell you that we were people, that the people who died were not just people, but they were very special ones. That they were caring, loving, fighting, funny, courageous, um, kind of people that you would like to have a cup of coffee with and you would definitely like to listen to because they had some great ideas. I think that what happened in Greensboro was that a group of people who were trying to change the way the system works, change the rules of the game, were shot down in cold blood in broad daylight on TV. And the rest of the population was scared into silence. We are potentially a great city. But that greatness is contingent on facing the truth and being real about it and helping to eradicate uh, the conditions here uh, and to lead this nation out of the quagmire of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor to the great possibility where a city demonstrates that it cares for all of its citizens and that it no longer plays the game of pitting people against each other, inventing cover stories, and playing media tap dance. That's our challenge. Um, that's why we're here. We have no need for revenge. We have no need uh, to get anybody back. We have a need to get it right so that we can be the people that God intended us to be. I think as a city, people still don't know the names, and they still don't know the persons who were killed as persons. They know them in categories, um, and the category is called communists. Communists is a priori. They already have a view of what it is, and they simply place the personalities into that. Uh, but I think that this week was a good beginning in the sense that many more people than uh, has em ever uh, got to meet Jim and Sandy and Cecil and Mike uh, and uh, to sense how much they cared uh, for themselves and for others and for community and for creation and that that's what their life was about. I think for the first time, perhaps several thousand people met them 20 years later, uh, and not only met them, met their friends and their families, uh, and met their work, uh, and I don't think that can be ever taken away. And as a result of your tremendous sacrifice on that tragic day of November 3rd, 1979, your spouses and your closest loved ones have built a permanent monument in your honor. It is named the Greensboro Justice Fund. This organization has given over $200,000 in grants to over 30 organizations in over nine states in the South to carry out the fight against racist violence and other forms of domination and abuse in the region. Uh, the way I see the Greensboro Justice Fund, I see every dollar that that fund distributes to organizations throughout the South carrying on the work of those people who died here 20 years ago as a tribute to those people. But in order for us to be great, we will have to deal with the masses of people who are homeless and sleeping on the railroad tracks, on boxes and on tattered rags, and no place to call home. In order for us to be a great city, 
We will have to deal with the reality that on Monday morning, there are hundreds of young men and young women, mainly black, lined up on the walls of our courts, ready to be heard at all, yea, even as cattle into prison that are now for profit enterprises. In order for us to be great, we are going to have to address that. And I can go on and on, but I want to declare that what the five were doing is they were addressing that, and therefore they were agents of greatness for this city. And what I want to raise up is that the marvelous and wonderful option of affirming the dignity, the worth, and the potential of all of God's children uh, and acknowledging that there are uh, uh, differences, uh, yea, even as the difference in the forest. All the trees are not the same, they're not the same height, they're not the same kind, but they are rooted in the same soil and actually uh, have value within the context of their being. Uh, that's a different way of thinking, um, and that's a community way of thinking, and that's why we here in Greensboro do believe that uh, we have a sense of direction, not just for a small group of people, but our vision is that we want to transform this whole city and have some possibility of doing it, uh, in part because in understanding what happened on November 3rd, 1979, the citizens have been so terribly hoodooed and hoodwinked and bamboozled uh, such that to understand that is to understand so much about the possibility of being an authentic community. And I think in spite of that great tragedy, the tragedy gradually becomes a gift as the bones of injustice arise out of the soil and challenges the society to be about something different and good and better. I still believe with the prophet Isaiah that crooked places in Greensboro and in this nation can be made straight. I still believe that rough places in Greensboro and in this nation can be made plain. I still believe that the valleys of despair in Greensboro and this nation can be lifted up. And I still believe that the mountains of problems and domination can be made low. And indeed, God's people can sit down around a welcome and diverse table of brotherhood and sisterhood in community where everybody is somebody and everybody is learned, loved, and everybody is affirmed. That is my vision for Greensboro and for the nation. And I call upon all of my fellow citizens and workers and clergy and homeless and our students and political leaders, our economic leaders, to let's join together. Let's understand what happened on November 3rd. Live through it, believe beyond it, join together and to make this city what it can be. And it ought to be like a light sitting on top of a hill beckoning to all of the rest of the nation that there is a possibility for a quality of life in this nation and we are not going to stop until we find it. And finally, to my beloved brothers and departed friends, I want to assure you tonight that your sacrifice has not been in vain. Your life is already beginning to serve as a source of strength and encouragement. And I want to personally thank you for your spirit and for your inspiration. And I pledge to you tonight to do my best to represent your best memory so long as I shall live. God bless you. Again, I want to acknowledge my personal regret uh, not being able to be with you in person. Uh, I had looked forward to the opportunity uh, to just uh, share and be shared with. Uh, but I want to wish uh, on this 20th anniversary uh, the most productive and engaging uh, discussion on the West Coast. Uh, and I share with you the warm greetings uh, of myself and my family, uh, the family uh, of the movement, and increasingly the family of Greensboro and North Carolina. Uh, and I believe that uh, we are ultimately part of a single family, and uh, therefore whatever we have is yours. And uh, I want to believe that the good things that you're doing and producing 
will redound to the benefit of us and all of God's people. So, what best wishes to you, and God bless you. It will rattle the foundations, it will stop the hands of time, and it will part the mighty oceans, and it will wear the rainbow sign, it will be heard by even silent ears, seen by blinded eyes, and it will happen without warning when we rise. And the chains will all be broken, and the locks will all fall free, and the doors will swing wide open for the whole wide world to see. And the powerful will understand that the scales fall from their eyes. It is not given, it is taken. We shall rise.